Welcome to Classic Firearms, guys. Kyle over here, and we've got Matt. What's up, everybody? How's it going, Matt? Doing good, man. How much stuff? Very good, very good. We're going to talk about something very important today. Very interesting. So today we're going to talk about how to tune your recoil spring assembly on your pistol. Okay. And there's a bunch of different pistols out there, but we've got a couple of nine millimeter options here because it is the most widely known handgun caliber. Yeah. Right. Do you have any experience on? So this? I wouldn't say I've ever tuned a handgun, but I would I would compare it to like tuning in an AR or something that I've done before, where you know oh. you've got a buffer yeah. and a recoil spring, you've got yep. the weight of the slide versus the recoil assembly. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, same analogy. You got to tune that thing to make sure that it works properly. Tune properly. that thing. Yeah. Tune that thing. Exactly. So, but uh, before we get into uh, this because this is gonna be more like a recreational competition shooting mm -hmm. uh, folks out there. I wanna talk about this. Guys, tuning a recoil spring is extremely important. You could induce a malfunction, so mm. it's very important that you know what you're doing. So when it comes to EDC, like self-defense carry, whether your home gun or your uh, gun that you carry, that you depend your life on, do not mess with that gun. Yeah, I mean, so the factory made it the way it's supposed to be running. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we don't want to uh, to mess with that when we're looking at something that we have to depend on for our lives. So, yeah, maybe it's just best to leave your everyday carry gun stock. Absolutely. A lot of people go out there and just kind of modify their guns, like a bunch of different modifications. And nothing they, wrong with that. But there's nothing wrong with that until but, you over modify it. And then next thing you know, you're inducing malfunctions and all that stuff. People put these comps on it and this and that. Next thing you know, the gun is not cycle or different magazines. Well, they kind of do their own grinding, whatever. And next thing you know, the gun is not working properly. Well, you know, it's if you actually didn't touch it at all, it would be just fine. Now, speaking of that, factory guns, like in this case, we've got the Glock 19M over here. They're oversprung. Like they're, the, the recoil spring assemblies, the, the weight is like heavier than even uh, needed, let's just say. Okay. So you avoid that failure feed. It's reliably uh, cycling every single time. Sure. Now, a factory re there you go, this is over here, there you go. Factory Glock 19 recoil spring assembly is this, basically, right here. 16 pounds. Okay. All right. Now we've got the Springfield Prodigy over there. Hey. It's a 9 millimeter as well, and that is 12 pounds. Oh, yeah, you can feel the difference there. Right? Yeah. So so much easier. You can probably hear it right, that thing. I don't know about that. I heard somebody did, though. Yeah, the guy behind that camera, John over there. He's the king, I heard. But anyways, <laughs> moving on. So 16 pounds. So. Let's talk about the, um, I guess, cons of heavy springs. Okay. How about that? Okay. So in this case, 16 pounds over here. When you have a really heavy spring, like Glock 19, 16 pounds, but some people go up to like 18 pounds or higher, what happens is when it's heavy, this slide will actually slide uh, cycle faster because mm -hmm. it'll you have this 18 pounds of pressure backwards mm -hmm. and then slingshot forward. Right. It's, it's tries to compress and then it goes forward. And when that happens, sometimes if you have it too heavy, this slide won't have, and we're talking about factory ammo, 15 right. or 115 uh, grains or 124 grains. Yeah, not plus P or anything. None like of that anything. stuff, yeah, exactly. This thing won't have enough, um, like the round, the, the load is not gonna have enough power to push this thing all the way to the back mm -hmm. in a way kind of short stroking it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. Exactly. So you're not you're gonna have a failure to feed, short stroke. And then sometimes it'll go all the way back, but again, you'll have to see this in a slow motion. It won't stay back there at all. Mm -hmm. Because on a prodigy, if you look at it or some light, really light uh, recoil spring assemblies, slide kind of goes back, stays there for a split second, and goes forward. So it reliably chambers the next round in. When it's super, super heavy, it goes back and just doesn't stay there at all. It wants to come back, and the magazine, the round inside the magazine, doesn't have time to catch up. Yeah, so there's there's less dwell time, right? The the, the slide doesn't come back and stay back long enough for the, the magazine to properly present the next round. Absolutely, and you'll have failure to feed issues right there. Uh, so that's obviously a big deal. Another one would be the muzzle dipping. Mm -hmm. So slingshot forward, and guess what happens? So if I'm firing this thing, mm -hmm. and it's got really heavy, like 18 pound spring in here, let's say, and I'm firing 115 grand, 124, the muzzle won't rise as much. Right. Good, okay, we don't like that. But when the slide goes forward, like slingshot forward, it'll dip down. Yeah. So it'll be like bang, and then you have to bring it back up. So bang, bring it back up, kind of like that. Yeah. And that's gonna slow you down. Well, and so, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, you know, there's a, 
there's kind of a violent stop at the end. So yes. if it's going back with a lot of inertia mm -hmm. and people already a lot of times kind of lean forward in anticipation of recoil. Yep. So you may end up with your first shot right on target and that second shot like all the way down at the base. Absolutely. Because it's just going to keep pulling you, right? Yep. Very good point, man. Very good point. Exactly. You'll have that first shot right on target. Then the muzzle won't rise as much. Mm -hmm. As you're thinking, you're going to line your target uh, sights back up. It'll dip and then you're like, oh, crap. And if you're firing fast, the next round went Just down off target, yep. when you dipped it and you got to bring it back up. So that's not good when it comes to competition shootings. Now, most competition shooters, you know, they go lighter than heavier, but some people do heavier, I don't know why. I just wanted to address that, okay? And of course, some people not necessarily competition shooting, they also can't rack a 16 pound, you know? Yeah. Uh, we hear about that from, from people who reach out to us and contact us about, you know, hey, I uh, maybe I, I don't have as much upper body strength, I have yeah. an injury, or I'm a smaller frame person, I have arthritis in my, my hands. Twins. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, but for whatever reason, you know, they, they're asking us for something that would be easier to rack because, yeah. you know, I think a lot of that's also body mechanics. People are out here trying to do this. That's right. You yeah. know, you like, you know, like, but, uh, but so certainly a lower weight recoil spring could assist you with manipulating the slide. Exactly. So this is uh, 16 pounds. If you went down two pounds, 14 pounds, this would still reliably function just fine. And you'll have, you'll save yourself a little bit of a, a pressure right there. Now moving on to light. Mm -hmm. uh, recoil spring assemblies. Now light one, obviously what that's gonna do is, it's gonna, the slide's gonna go back violently, right? Much much more violently than, let's say, a factory. Well, it's fighting less spring pressure exactly. to get all the way back. Exactly. But with that, if it's going violently back, then the muzzle is gonna rise more. Sure. However, it's not going back forward as violently as a heavier mm -hmm. uh, recoil spring, so therefore you're not gonna have that dip. And if there is, it's gonna be very minute, very minimal. So with that being said, rise up, and you are able to get right back on target. But, mm -hmm. dude, a heavy recoil spring assembly is going to cycle faster than a lighter one. Did sure. You, did you know that? Well, that makes sense physics-wise. You have more. So one of the things I, I guess we should point out is, so the slide should basically come to a complete stop two times, right? When it comes all the way back, mm -hmm. it's stopping. So that's using all of the power from the initial firing of the round. Yep. And then when it comes all the way front, it's using only power from the spring. So there's a sudden stop when it reaches the full length of travel. So when you say like a light spring, they'll have more felt recoil and it'll rise more. Yep. It's because it's taking less of that energy to yes. move the slide back. It's taking more energy with the heavier one so you won't have as much rise. And then with the dip, you know, again, you're, you're going to have where the slide coming forward has got a lot of energy on a heavy spring and that sudden stop's gonna push down versus on a lighter spring, it's not coming forward with the authority of all that force. Exactly, so some people say this, like, you know what, they wanna have a gun that shoots real fast, of course, okay, you got yourself a really heavy recoil spring, it shoots real fast, but then your, your accuracy is gonna suffer because it kinda dips down. So kinda like the theoretical cyclic rate of it's cycling fast, you can fire fast, yes. versus your practical, I have to get back on target. Exactly, so, the thing is, it dips down, so you gotta bring it back up mm -hmm. and then fire again, so you lose some time. So you may not lose time in the back here because it cycles so fast, but it dips forward, you lose some time there. Now with the lighter recoil spring, it cycles slower because the slide actually likes to stay in the back mm -hmm. a little bit. To yeah, the it's gonna live it more dwell. Exactly. So therefore, it's gonna be slower, however, because you're not gonna have that dip, when it goes back forward, your sights are already aligned. So. Which one would you rather pick? It's really up to the uh, shooter. I mean, okay. on, on, on the other side, you know, we talked about how the, the heavy spring, the slide may outrun the magazine. Mm -hmm. On a lighter weight spring, it may not have the force to feed if there's fouling or something, because it's got less energy just to push the round into the chamber. Great point, dude, exactly. And the downsides, <laughs> if you go too light, well, guess what? Your your spring is so light, it just doesn't have enough, time, enough uh, pressure to kind of, Put the gun in battery, mm -hmm. and when the gun is not in battery, that's that's not good. You got the dead man's gun right there. I know it's a competition thing, but also the magazine tension. Like we all know, like when you have 15 rounds in a magazine, you put that 15th round in, it's so hard, mm -hmm. right? So that magazine coil spring is just fully depressed. So when you have a super light spring, recoil spring assembly, it just won't have enough power to strip that round right. as well, just from the magazine, because the mag magazine tension is so high. So these are the downsides and ups. So with that being said, when you have, when you're tuning your pistol's recoil spring assembly, mm -hmm. it really does come down to, again, we're talking about tuning. 
you need to do a lot of trial and errors. So you gotta get that gun, and let's say you wanna reduce this Glock. Uh, you're using your own load, something lighter, right? And you wanna go down to 11 pounds, mm -hmm. right? You wanna try that out, like 10, 11, 12, just play around, see which one gives you this, because ultimately the goal is this. You want not so much, less muzzle rise. Sure. So it goes right here and it comes right back down. Mm -hmm. Again, with super light, muzzle will rise more but it won't dip. With super heavy, muzzle won't rise really all that much, but it'll dip. Mm -hmm. So you wanna tune it and find that balance where the gun is basically floating. And of course, so, yeah. that's also gonna vary depending on the shooter, because you know different people who have different uh, grips, uh, different ability to kind of physically control the recoil of the gun. You know, when you say it's gonna dip more or less, uh, it's gonna vary by shooter, because somebody who's more experienced, they might be able to control that recoil and not have the rise as much, even with a lighter recoil spring as an inexperienced shooter. Of course. Um, so it's, it, when you tune it, you gotta tune it for yourself. You know, this is of course. to your preference and ability. Yeah. So one of the things though, is that you know, you're not gonna be using self-defense ammo in a competition setting, right? So yeah. you're not gonna run 124 grain hollow points shooting a competition. Uh, a lot of times it's actually a much lighter round. So, you know, while standard might be 115, competition rounds are probably like 90 or yeah. 90. Yeah. grain um, and so that's going to generate less you know force on the slide coming back so yeah. again to avoid that kind of short stroking you might need a lighter recoil spring oh yeah in order to avoid a malfunction there uh, well that that's the whole point uh, it, absolutely so you go 90 grains so that's there's gonna be a much different kind of explosion in here mm -hmm. so the spring weight is gonna come into a factor over here so if you go to a much lighter spring uh, weight just enough to create that decent ejection pattern for you, right? Mm -hmm. Then this gun is going to, again, it's gonna come down to, as you said, to the shooter, right? This gun is going to just rise up that much back on. And then, like, again, That's since it. it's, it's, you know, you got the, you don't have as much recoil coming back, that slide isn't coming back as fast, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get quite as much rise. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, that's gonna help you shoot flatter, shoot faster. One other thing I did have a concern though with the light recoil spring is the idea that, especially for competition shooters, professional shooters, if you have a, a young Jerry Michalek out there, uh, theoretically, since there's a longer dwell on the slide, yeah. you have introduced a possibility of outrunning the cycling of your gun. That's you right. know, if it's taking longer for your slide to reciprocate back and come forward, then when you go to pull the trigger a second time, has it returned all the way to battery? That's right. Um, That's so a you good could, point. You could pull the trigger that second time, it's a dead firearm, and then you know simply releasing the trigger at that point, it's it's not going to have cocked. You know, it's got to cock during the action of cycling. Absolutely, and that's really I mean great point, and that's exactly what we're talking about over here, tuning your recoil spring. So it's going to take some trial and error, guys. You're gonna you may not nail it right off the gate, but uh, if you don't know anything about it, definitely seek some professional help with this because it really is very important. But once you get that perfectly dialed in, where it goes into battery, your rejection pattern is good to go and the, the muzzle rise is perfectly controlled, and there's no dip and you're right on target, you know it. But it's gonna take some time, guys. You're gonna get to the range and I fired a few rounds. I think uh, that's oh. about it. Okay, so what, do you think? Uh, what about we introduce like a complicating factor? Okay. You know, we're, we're talking just about the recoil assembly. What if we added something like a comp. this comp? Because hmm. well. this is going to change kind of how the math of this works. Again, we're talking about balancing the, the force of the projectile causing rearward force with the slide and then that slide coming forward on spring pressure. Well, this comp is going to change how much force is acting to push the slide rearward. Exactly, and that's what we were talking about initially, right? People put comps on guns and whatever, and they don't change anything. They don't tune their recoil spring assembly, and next thing you know, they're having problems. The, cycle, the, the gun is not cycling, it's not feeding, all that, because they haven't tuned this thing. So yes, if you're gonna modify it, like you put a comp on here, and you got the 16 pound, this has got the afterburner over here, so it's not gonna be too much. Mm -hmm. I know this is Ryan's personal gun with the uh, D DPM, um, what do you call this? Uh, DPM recoil spring assembly, which this one is designed. It's it's the same weight, like 16 pounds, like a Glock uh, 19 or 45 OEM, but this is designed to reduce the recoil by like three to 5%, so you get a better felt recoil with this thing. Uh, smoother slide uh, cycling. But uh, yeah, in this case, it doesn't really affect it. Uh, just It's just not the biggest comp. But if you have one of those like bigger comps on here, you might want to drop a couple of pounds 
on your recoil spring assembly so this slide doesn't have as much tension of a 16 pounder so you can go fully cycle. Well, well again, you know, it's changing maybe how the gases are interacting with the slide. Also, yeah. it's just adding weight to the slide. Well, at least for the first couple seconds or yeah. very small amount of time yeah. that the barrel and slider are locked together, you know, well, this comp is going to be adding mass to that reciprocating mass. Yep. Uh, so, you know, certainly if you make one change, you might have to go back and make another change. You know, maybe you got it tuned, you, yeah. got, you took your factory glock, you have it perfectly tuned, you you put a little bit lighter spring and you're like, hey, this is working real. Yeah. But then you decide, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the barrel, I'm gonna get a longer threaded barrel, I'm gonna add a comp. And then you're just gonna have to kind of go back to square one and, square and, one. and reassess. Yep. Reassess, shoot, and see how your shot placements are, see how the gun is behaving, mm -hmm. and then go with that. So that's about it, guys. I uh, hope this was pretty helpful to you guys. And definitely, thanks a lot for giving some of your insights, uh, Matt, over here. Uh, let us know in the comment section, what do you think about this? What are your experiences? And uh, see if this video helped you out tuning your gun at all. Well, anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. Tuning in. Uh, go to cfcontest.com. CF Contest. I heard there's some good things happening. Yeah, there's always really cool stuff over there. Uh, always, uh, always an exciting place to be. I know. I, I go there all the time. So check out cfcontest.com. Thanks for watching the video. We always appreciate your business. God bless. And we'll see you on the next one.